Hey everyone, Nurse Ryan here, and today we're going to be talking about the drug ampicillin, also known by the brand name Ampicin. You can use the timestamps in the video description to jump ahead. Ampicillin is an antibiotic, meaning it inhibits the growth of or destroys bacteria. More specifically, ampicillin belongs to the penicillin class of antibiotics. Before we get into how penicillins work, let's very quickly review two different types of cells. Bacteria are single-celled or unicellular organisms that can cause disease, and often look something like this. As you can see, bacteria have cell walls and cell membranes. This makes them different from human cells, which only have cell membranes but lack cell walls. So the way that penicillins work is by inhibiting cell wall synthesis in susceptible bacteria, basically preventing the bacteria from growing their cell walls. And without a cell wall, bacterial cells become very vulnerable and quickly die off. This way, penicillins do not affect regular human cells like blood cells, muscle cells, etc., but only bacterial cells. Some bacteria are not susceptible to antibiotics like penicillin, or you can say that they are resistant to penicillin, and we'll talk a little bit more about that resistance in a bit. Ampicillin is a broad-spectrum antibiotic, which means that it can act on a wide variety of bacteria. Ampicillin can be used to treat various bacterial infections like respiratory, gastrointestinal and skin infections, urinary tract infections, meningitis, and more. But like I mentioned, some bacteria are resistant to penicillins because they can produce an enzyme called penicillinase, which inactivates penicillins. So keep in mind that ampicillin can only be used on ampicillin-susceptible bacteria. However, ampicillin can be combined with other antibiotics to help combat penicillinase, dicloxacillin being one example. Examples of genera or types of bacteria that ampicillin can treat include enterococcus, staphylococcus, enterobacterols like E. coli, and many more. Some of the possible side effects of ampicillin include diarrhea, nausea and vomiting, superinfection, and increased bleeding time. Superinfections are infections occurring after or on top of another infection, and are thought to be caused by damage to the host flora, which normally prevent the growth of pathogenic organisms. Antibiotic-associated diarrhea, which is usually three or more loose watery stools per day, is common when starting penicillin antibiotics, and should improve once the antibiotic is completed. About 1-10% to of people report allergic reactions to penicillin, commonly skin rashes, and anaphylactic reactions occur in approximately 0.01-0.05% to of clients. Do not use ampicillin in those with a penicillin allergy. Use cautiously in those with low creatinine clearance or liver disease, as ampicillin dose may need to be decreased to accommodate for poor drug elimination. Elderly clients may also require lower dosing. Also, do not use ampicillin in clients with infectious mononucleosis, commonly called mono. Always remember to assess and monitor for side effects of ampicillin. Teach clients to complete the full course of therapy, usually 10 to 14 days, even if symptoms improve. Due to the common side effect of diarrhea, remember to increase fluid intake while taking ampicillin to prevent dehydration. If a severe allergic reaction occurs, epinephrine alongside antihistamines and corticosteroids are often administered for treatment of anaphylaxis. Ampicillin is available orally, intramuscularly, and intravenously. Dosing varies greatly, but for adults, it can be approximately 250 to 500 milligrams every six hours orally. Lastly, always watch for drug-to-drug -drug interactions with ampicillin. And that's about it for the basics of ampicillin. If this video has helped you out, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. If you have any questions or would like me to review a specific drug or topic, please let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.